What is this beautiful object we're approaching? This is Maki Maki, one of the dwarf planets in our solar system that has a new surprise for us. In late April of 2016, we've discovered that this beautiful object also has its own moon, which actually is very exciting for several reasons, one of which is because we can now use a very important formula derived from Kepler's third law of planetary motion to essentially figure out what the mass of this uh, beautiful dwarf planet is and possibly even what its density is and so on and so forth. So its mysteries will now be discovered. Now let's actually land on it and talk a little bit more, more about this dwarf planet and its companion moon. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy this video. And welcome to our solar system. So let's look around our solar system and find Maki Maki. There it is, right next to Haumea, which um, we actually discussed in one of the previous videos last week. I'm going to zoom in here. Now, this is obviously outdated because uh, this is a very recent discovery and I'm making this video about a day after it was announced. But essentially, um, in this game, Maki Maki is pretty well represented. And so we're going to take a look at it here. It is a little bit brighter than this, but it very likely looks kind of like that possibly a little bit more red because we know that it has something called tholins uh, on the surface so it should kind of look similar to our beautiful friend Pluto. So imagine Pluto's colors, this is brownish reddish color and uh, white patches here and there. So this is what Maki Maki would very likely look like as well, possibly a little bit brighter because we know that Pluto's albedo or reflectivity is only 0.5 whereas Maki Maki has reflectivity of about 0.8 so it's a little bit more shiny a little bit more bright and just to show you the size difference here I'm going to add Maki Maki right next to Pluto and show you what it looks like so they're going to basically orbit each other and so here we are we're going to give them a binary orbit so they don't actually smack into each other and so this is what Maki Maki looks like com in comparison to Pluto. So it's a little bit smaller and a little bit less massive. But nevertheless, this is actually the third biggest object uh, in this region where essentially a lot of these dwarf planets and a lot of these large objects are located. And so uh, after Pluto and Aries, this is the next large object. And the thing is, we know that uh, Haumea has satellites. We know that Aries has satellites. We also know that Pluto has satellites. As a matter of fact, if I go here... And under planets, if I click on Pluto and moons, you'll notice that Pluto has actually five moons, biggest being Charon. And uh, there is actually five moons that it has. So it's not uncommon for um, dwarf planets, for these objects and uh, trans-Neptunian objects, as they're also known, to have uh, their own moons. And so let's actually place Maki Maki here once again. We're going to give it a balanced orbit. It's going to be very close to Charon. And so it's a little bit bigger than Charon, but uh, a little bit smaller than Pluto. And so now we know that Maki Maki has its own moon and so far it doesn't actually have a name. Its name is currently um, S2015136472. That's just a designation based on when it was found. And its nickname currently is just MK2 or I guess Maki Maki 2. And I'm going to show you um, how small it actually is in comparison to everything else. And okay, you didn't see that. That did not happen. Nothing to see here. Let's go back to our solar system and let's pretend this never happened. Go back to Maki Maki. And now using uh, this add button here, I'm going to place MK2 at a distance where we found it. So we're going to go into minor planets here and choose a small object that's not too big. Like for example, Pallas here. Uh, it's actually smaller than Pallas, but we're just going to use that as a start. And place them in a balanced motion at a distance of approximately... 21,000 kilometers. So they're actually not very close, but not very far either. And the size of this moon is actually not very big. It's only about 80 kilometers in radius. So it's a lot smaller than um, most moons, but nevertheless, it's larger than some, some of the moons that we know of, like for example, moons of Mars. It's definitely larger than those moons, but obviously much, much smaller than our moon. Our own moon would be huge here. Like if I were to place our own moon, this is how big it is. 
And so essentially, yeah, both of these objects are smaller than our moon. But what's interesting about MK2 and Makimaki is that they actually have very different surfaces. So we know that Makimaki is very reflective, so which indicates that it has a lot of reflective um, ices on, on the surface. Uh, things like nitrogen, for example, and a lot of things like um, methane and ethane ices, which reflect a lot of the light, making this, uh, this planet actually really cold in comparison to some other objects. It's only about 30 degrees Kelvin which is 30 degrees above absolute zero. In other words, it's much colder than Pluto. However, MK2 is a lot darker. It's, as a matter of fact, it's as dark as you see here. It's almost charcoal black. And its surface is also warmer, which suggests to scientists that it's very likely that one of the reasons they didn't see it before is because it was so dark, but also um, it's possibly so dark because all of the ice is on the surface here couldn't really stay on the surface and they escaped into the outer space and possibly landed on Maki Maki because it's not big enough to maintain, uh, to have enough gravity to maintain those gases. And so a lot of the um, nitrogen ice, a lot of the methane and ethane ice, which would make this very bright, basically ran away and escaped uh, this MK2 object. Now let's go back to Maki Maki for a second and I just actually wanted to mention what the name even means. So when this object was discovered back in 2005, there were several other dwarf planets that were discovered with it. One of them was of course Eris, another dwarf planet, which is actually responsible for uh, destroying Pluto's status as a planet. This is why Pluto is no longer a planet because we found so many of these objects in this region. And we also found Haumea, which is uh, the object we've talked about last week. But Maki Maki was actually discovered on Easter. And it turns out that on Easter Island, there is another religion where they worship a god of creation known as Maki Maki. Therefore, the name Maki Maki was born based on the, the fact that this uh, object was discovered on, um, on the Easter of 2005. And let me briefly mention some of the other cool facts about Maki Maki. One is that it's pretty far away from, um, from the sun, from the central solar system. The sun is right there, far, far away. And one orbit around the sun takes this object approximately 310 years, actually longer than Pluto even. And even though you can actually see this object in a telescope, it's kind of, if you look at where it's located in terms of the actual plane of our solar system, it's a, it's sort of above the plane where like most planets are here, but Maki Maki is here. And so we haven't seen uh, this object for a long time because it's kind of above the plane where we don't usually look for objects. But, but back in 1930s when Neptune was discovered, this object was actually along the plane, but the problem is that it was uh, against the background of Milky Way, uh, basically the inner Milky Way galaxy. And because it was against this background, it was sort of overshadowed by other brighter stars, and so the scientists didn't really see it for that reason, although technically they could have discovered it back in the 30s. And so it was not until 2005 when we actually started looking for these objects actively, when we actually saw both Makimaki, Ares, oh, and of course Homei as well. Now, why is it so fascinating and important that we actually found MK2 and why are scientists so excited about it? Well, for one, there's this formula uh, based on Kepler's third law that allows us to now calculate the exact mass of Maki Maki and, of course, its density based on the mass that we discover. And the way it works is, so here is actually the formula on your screen. It's a little bit complex, but there's a, there's a website that allows you to basically plug in the numbers and uh, get the result right away. As soon as we know how long MK2 takes to orbit Maki Maki, and as soon as we basically calculate this distance exactly, and we, we think it's about 21,000 kilometers, but if we know this more exact, that'll be better, we will be able, using the distance and the time it takes to orbit, to find exact mass of Maki Maki. And then using its mass, knowing its um, volume, we can find its density. And knowing its density, we can try to estimate what the composition of this dwarf planet is. So it's all kind of fascinating because just finding this one little rock will allow us to learn so much more about Maki Maki itself. And also, if we discover more about the orbit of MK2, we can actually start speculating about the origin of these uh, two objects. For example, if there's an elongated orbit, so for, uh, uh, what, I'm, what I mean by this is if the orbit kind of looks like this, more eccentric, this would suggest that um, this object was captured by Maki Maki at some point and they have a different sort of birth. They were uh, created differently from different 
objects previously. However, if the eccentricity here is relatively low and it has a very circular orbit, it's very likely that uh, these two objects were created at the same time and were actually made up uh, because of some sort of a large collision of a much larger object that then created these two objects that started kind of orbiting around each other. And so within the next year or so, we'll actually have quite a lot of really awesome information about Maki Maki. And there's even already a plan to possibly launch a flyby mission similar to the one uh, that uh, happened last year during New Horizon mission when uh, there was a flyby of Pluto. We might even have a mission that will go to Maki Maki uh, by 2026, I believe, and it would take 16 years to get here. So hopefully by the year 2040-ish, we might actually have better pictures of this dwarf planet as well. And by then, I'll be super, super old. And one more interesting fact about Maki Maki is that um, we kind of know now that it, unlike Pluto, it has very, very little atmosphere. So we know that Pluto actually does have a bit of atmosphere. We saw this in pictures that were received from New Horizons. But here, the atmosphere is almost negligible. And how do we know that? Well, that's actually kind of cool. Back in 2011, this is what happened. And I'm going to try to simulate this by basically adding another star. It actually was passing by in front of a very large and very bright star. And what we could... Oh boy, it's going really fast toward the star. Don't go that fast yet. We're not ready for this. Uh, and what we could see is we could actually look at the edge right here. And normally you would see a refraction from, based on the at uh, atmosphere and then you could actually calculate this um, atmosphere using the refraction rate. But for Maki Maki, there was actually nothing. There was almost nothing. And so what you see right now, uh, this gassing, it's actually because I technically turned this into a comet now. But uh, if I were to place this object farther away... And so here, this is a better, I think this is a better image of what we actually saw. So it passed in front of a very bright star and right there at the edge, we saw nothing right here at the edge. And that means there is no atmosphere, which suggests to us that unlike Pluto, it has a slightly different composition on the surface and possibly uh, this is why there is no atmosphere. However, if there was atmosphere, let's just give it a little bit of atmosphere so you can see what it looks like. This is what we would have seen. We would have seen this really dim ref a refraction based on the atmospheric layer. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but it's it's essentially this really thin layer that is formed right above the surface. And because we didn't see that, we know that there is almost nothing here. But unfortunately, when it comes to MK2, we know almost nothing about it, except that it's very, very dark and that it's only about 80 kilometers in radius. Unfortunately, we also probably not know much about it because it's so dark. But based on what we learn uh, about Maki Maki, we might actually be able to estimate uh, and hypothesize more about MK2 and learn about it just based on what we already know from other similar dwarf planets like Haumea and Ares. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to mention in this video and here's actually the simulation that I like to take a look at sometimes called Solar System with all possible dwarf planets and trans-Neptunian objects that we've discovered um, up to about maybe early 2016, late 2015. There's quite a lot of them, quite a lot of them actually have their own moons, and quite a lot of them are relatively large, but the ones that are currently named, like uh, Varda, Haumea, Maki Maki, are the ones that we're kind of really interested in, because they will actually teach us so much more about the solar system than what we already know. And the fact that we keep discovering these new objects in this region really makes me wonder how many more hidden objects are there in, in the outer solar system and if there's actually a chance for us to one day find another planet that we haven't seen before. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all your support. Subscribe if you still haven't. Like this video if you liked it and share this video with your friends if they, they also like to watch space videos. In the next video, we'll talk about something else really awesome about space, science, math, or something else. I might even surprise you. I'll see you guys in the next video, thank you for watching, and let's actually go into the main solar system, zoom into Maki Maki, and make our sun go supernova. I'll see you in the next video, bye bye. And it's gone. That was really, really fast. Way faster than I expected. That was a very powerful supernova. I think I've destroyed this solar system. I'm really sorry about this Maki Maki. I think we're gonna miss you. Bye bye.